All right, folks, why don't we get started? Welcome everyone to our virtual celebration of the 2021 legislative session. I can't believe it's over, what a whirlwind. I'm Allie Richards, I'm the CEO of Let's Grow Kids, and I'm just really grateful to be with you all here today and connect on and highlight all that we've been able to accomplish together this year already. But before we get started, we really must take a moment to acknowledge this is the one year anniversary of George Floyd's death. And it's a pivotal moment that not only sparked grief and outrage across this country, but also a national reckoning around systemic racism and inequities in our world. So earlier this morning, Phil Scott, our governor, officially designated today, May 25th, George Floyd Remembrance Day in Vermont. And I have to say preparing for our time together and especially this remembrance, I just snuck out for a quick walk with Bo and Wesley, my two-year-old twins, and I squeezed them extra tight and said that we are recommitting ourselves to make this world a better place in any way that we can as individuals, organization, professionally. And so we'd like to take a moment together right now to honor this day in history, this life, and also all those who have been harmed by racist and equitable policies, practices, and actions with a moment of silence before our pro program begins tonight. So if you would join me, let's take that moment together right now. Thank you all. Thank you for spending that moment of reflection with us together. As the governor said in his statement this morning, not only did George Floyd's death elevate racial justice within our national discourse, it actually called upon all of us to think what role can we play in dismantling the systems and policies, the legal structures, everything that upholds racist practices and narratives that really perpetuate the inequities that we see every day in our communities. And central to the work at Let's Grow Kids is our unwavering commitment to working to a more just society through equitable, high quality, affordable childcare. So we thought it would be a good moment to actually share what the National Association of the Education of Young Children say is their vision of early learning communities that actually teach our kids to express comfort and joy with human diversity and to increasingly recognize injustice and have the will and the skills to act against prejudice. So as we know, this lever, this lever of high quality, affordable, equitable childcare that we're all working so hard together towards, it's not just an amazing support for our kids and families, communities, but it's also an, an incredible platform for us to really think about how to work towards a just future through our children and what they learn at their most formative years. So with every action that we take, we do, we do get one step closer to a just and equitable society that our children deserve and need. And this isn't just a day of remembrance, it's a day of action as well. And that's what we are all about here together. And looking at your faces, I know that is what you all are about working with us so closely over these years. So I know this is tricky to move from one to another and make a pivot, but let's just take a deep breath together. This is a complex moment of both celebration and reflection, joy, fear, grief, hope. It's really capturing a lot, I think, what we have all felt together over this past year and a half. So thank you for joining in this moment and holding this complexity. Whew. So deep breath together as we pivot to the program. And mostly thank you all for being in community together tonight, but also through this movement that brings us all together that we're working on so hard. And, um, and thank you, just thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing this moment, this reflection and being able to celebrate in this context context, this very complex context and environment that we're all in. So let's do just that. Let's do that. Let's talk about how we have been working together to bring about positive, equitable policy change in Vermont with a near unanimous vote on H-171. On the same day we had a 30-0 vote out of the Senate, President Biden declared this as a cornerstone of his domestic agenda. I mean, we can't 
drop everything and celebrate, but I think we have earned a moment of reflection and almost pinching ourselves that here we are um, having moved childcare, childcare up so far as a policy imperative for the state of Vermont. So it's, it's unusual that we would get such significant support folks. It's, it's tripartisan. I'm, I go off a little script here to say it's actually quad partisan because we have a really strong Republican, Democrat, progressive and independent uh, presence, political presence in Vermont. And we had full quad partisan support for this bill. We would not have this pivotal moment be here today without every single one of you and your hard work and your persistence. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's very unusual that we would see this much support for significant funding in a bill. That's because you all help policymakers understand that childcare is essential to supporting not only our families, our kids, our businesses, economy, but also we need it to recover from this global pandemic and to grow and thrive for generations to come. So this landmark legislation that you all got over the legislative finish line is waiting for the governor's signature. And because of all of your work, we have every reason to believe he is going to sign that into law. So that is worth celebrating. $12.7 million going into the system right now with a path towards affordability for families, compensation for early educators. Wow, wow. So before I go <laughs> into too many of the details, I actually think you wanna hear from an exclusive look. We actually have really um, you know, rare footage here of a press briefing on H-171 that kind of explains a little bit more about what the child care bill does, why it matters, and what's next for our campaign. So without further ado, let's roll the tape and see what we can learn about what we've done together here with the bill. We interrupt this broadcast of the great Bennington Baking Show to take you live to the State House in Montpelier, where Let's Grow Kids' policy team is set to answer questions about child care bill H-171. Good morning. We're here to celebrate passage of H-171, the child care bill, with overwhelming tripartisan support. Today, Vermont has set the stage for true child care reform. And it's all because of the hard work and dedication of you, Vermont's early childhood champions. And with that, I'll open the floor to questions. Yes, you in the front row. What's in the child care bill? Well, the child care bill lays the foundation for a high quality, affordable, accessible, and equitable system our families and businesses need. In the short term, it makes $12.7 million in investments now to stabilize Vermont's early childhood education system. Where are we going to buy with all that money? Ice cream? Not exactly. I'll let my colleague Jen take that question. She's coming to us live from her home. Thanks, Sarah. 5.5 million of the immediate investments will be used to continue to transform Vermont's child care financial assistance program. This means many Vermont families will spend less money on child care, more families will be eligible for child care financial assistance, and child care programs will receive higher reimbursements for their essential work. So no ice cream. No. But a family of four with two parents who earn $15 an hour, which adds up to a little over $62,000 a year, and an infant and a preschooler in full-time child care could save $255 a week with these changes. But that's not all this bill does. I'll let Katie tell you about the rest. Thanks, Jen. The child care bill also invests $2.5 to support current and future early educators with scholarships and student loan repayment programs, and $4.5 to upgrade the failing IT system used to administer Vermont's early childhood education system. That's pretty cool. Like ice cream. It's very cool. We also have $200,000 to study the way Vermont's child care system works and develop recommendations on how to strengthen and streamline the way we administer and structure the system in the future. What does that mean exactly? It means we want to make sure we have the strongest, best possible child care system. Nice! I think we should also have ice cream. I agree. Next question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. Yes, you in the back. What? What else did the bill do? Not only does the bill make investments now, it also charts a course for the future. And when we get there, we set a goal that no family will spend more than 10% of their income on childcare 
and all early childhood educators will be fairly compensated and well supported. Are there flying cars in the future? I don't know. What I do know is that the voices of those most impacted will help inform the state's work to administer the child care system and allocate federal COVID response funds for child care. And there will be experts who will help identify stable, long-term funding for a transformed child care system. It's no flying cars, but I'll take it. Are there any other questions about the child care bill? Sarah mentioned Vermont's early childhood champions before. Who is she talking about? Vermont's early childhood champions are everyone who signed our petition, who emailed their legislators, who shared a Facebook post or liked a tweet, everyone who made a donation or put up a lawn sign. In fact, it's everyone who talked to their family and friends about solving our child care crisis here in Vermont. And some of our strongest child care champions are our elected officials, our lawmakers and our statewide elected officials like Governor Scott and Treasurer Pierce who do such a great job representing Vermont. Um, sorry to interrupt, Trey, but we're just now receiving word that Senate pro tempore Becca Balland is standing by with prepared statement on the child care bill. Hi, I'm President pro tem Becca Balland, and I am here to say we did it. We did it together, all of us, all the advocates out in the field, all the Let's Grow Kids partners, all the House members and senators, all the people who came together to get the child care bill over the finish line. And I'm just here to thank you for all your work and for not losing faith and hope, despite the fact that we were doing our work uh, over Zoom in a virtual legislative session, which was so challenging for all of us. And I think one of the hardest parts is that we are not able to come together to celebrate. So I'm hoping we will do that at some point soon, all come together and celebrate the good work. But for now, Know that I'm thinking about all of you and I am so, so grateful for all of our shared work. Have a great day. That was Senate pro tempore Becca Bolland discussing the child care bill. Back to you, Trey. Thank you, Chance. Like I was saying, Vermont's early childhood champions are the thousands upon thousands of supporters who are the reason why H-171 was written and considered and passed with so much support. They're the reason why we have an opportunity to solve our child care crisis here in Vermont. And they're the ones who are going to make sure that our elected officials have the support they need to make the long term public investment needed to truly transform our child care system. And they're the reason why we're going to win. What happens when we win? When we're successful, Vermont will truly be the best place to live, work, play and raise a family. And eat ice cream. Of course, ice cream. And thank you, everyone, for coming out today, for all of your support, and for helping us to get this done. Onward. And that was the Let's Grow Kids policy team celebrating the passage of H.171. Stay tuned to this channel for more updates on the child care bill and future bills like it. And now back to the Great Bennington Baking Show. We're lucky to have a very um, astute and fair and unbalanced, you know, unbiased uh, press corps here in Vermont. Um, thank you all very much, and uh, to our our young actors as well. Drake, I think you're going to take us the next. Thanks, Allie. Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me or who didn't just see me on that video, um, my name is is Drake Turner. I'm the policy manager at Let's Go Kids. It's it's really nice to be able to spend this time with you all and celebrate this bill and, and what it means for our childcare system now and into the future. Um, and thank you for indulging our moment of, of silliness. Um, it's so fun to get to, to be creative and, and think of ways to share, you know, sometimes wonky policy information. And, and we're really grateful for our, our communications team for being so wonderful. So um, we hope this was an interesting and, and interactive way to, to learn more about what H171 does now and in the future. Um, and before we move into breakout groups to talk about the summer and beyond, we really wanted to at least take a few minutes right now um, in case folks have any questions about the bill um, or about, you know, where we are in our legislative campaign. So we know we threw a lot of information at you. And um, I know there are some folks who really have a pretty intricate knowledge of this bill, but this also could be your first time really hearing about it. So um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. We have a few minutes here, as I mentioned, to, to really talk about 
can address any questions that folks have. Um, but we're going to keep this part brief because we really want to be focused on action for the summer. Um, so if anyone has any questions that we aren't able to answer, or if you think of any questions either later tonight or throughout your week, um, we'll be following up with, with folks. Um, and we'll also be following up with everyone um, with more resources about the bill, what it does, what it sets in motion, what it doesn't do yet, um, starting tomorrow. So um, be on the lookout for more information from us. Um, and yeah, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to, to pop them in the chat and we can, we can go over any, anything you might want to know more about. Hi, Drake. Um, while people are typing, I have received a question um, which is really, you know, simply, but I know not an, a totally simple answer. What about the federal funding for, um, for child care? How does that affect Vermont? That's a great question, Anna. Thanks for sharing it. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot of federal funding that's come into Vermont and obviously across the country since the pandemic started. Um, and really an, an incredible amount of, of investment and thought has gone into how to direct those funds toward the childcare system. So um, I can briefly go over, I guess, maybe three um, buckets of federal funding that have had an impact um, and that H-171 does have some um, significance around. So, so last year, um, in the earlier days of the pandemic, the CARES Act was passed at the federal level, which had um, a significant amount of funding for Vermont. And there was a lot of, um, we had a lot of, I think, license to, to decide as a state how we wanted to invest that money. Um, and one of the really incredible things that happened was that our, our administration and our legislature and, and decision makers in Vermont really understood how important it was to make a significant investment in stabilizing our child care system through the pandemic. Um, and, and that money last year made a huge difference in preventing the complete collapse of our child care system. Um, and it also really made it possible for us to be thinking about the future with a bill like H-171. So that was kind of a foundational um, federal investment for our campaign. Um, and then more recently, earlier this year, the Biden administration passed the American Rescue Plan Act or the, the, the Congress did, US Congress, um, passed the American Rescue Plan Act, which has $47 million specifically for childcare investments in Vermont related to the pandemic. Um, so there are some pieces of that money um, that sort of flow through H-171. Um, and are, you know, we are hoping we're going to go to support the workforce. There's a lot more opportunity for how that money can be invested. And the bill also puts in place um, some processes under which the administration in consultation with stakeholders um, and diverse communities in Vermont will have input into how that money is used over the next few years um, so that those funds are, are allocated in a really equitable way and in a way that sets us up for the, the future childcare system we really know um, Vermont needs. And then the last I guess, piece of, of federal um, policy I would mention that is um, of import to us is that, or more recently, um, President Biden um, announced his American Families Plan, which at this point is still a proposal, but it would make historic investments in childcare and universal pre-K. Um, so again, the introduction of that plan is just one step in a long process at the federal level, but it's a really big deal. Um, that we as a state have been doing and that we as a nation continue to think about what the future could hold for, for childcare and for early childhood education. Um, so those proposals, if they are enacted, if they do gain traction, would really bolster our efforts in Vermont to create that equitable childcare system we need. So, so all the federal um, funding that, that has and will continue to, to flow through Vermont um, is, is super important and really helps, helps our work move forward. All right, and I think I've seen some more questions come through the chat. I see a question about um, increasing compensation for early childhood educators, um, which looks pretty in depth and thoughtful, which is wonderful. Um, and I, you know, what what the bill does, one of the components of the bill that's really important is this financing study um, and, and a goal set that, that early childhood educators are fairly compensated and well supported. And we really see that as one of the, the cornerstones of our legislative campaign, um, along with a 10% affordability standard for, for families. Um, what that looks like, what that means for early childhood educators in terms of what the, you know, the pay scale is, what benefits look like, um, you know, where folks start based on experience and degree, those are, are all considerations that I think we have to 
to really deeply consider in the, the coming years to make sure that the system we're building, it really works for early childhood educators. And I think, you know, that also needs to be done in consultation with the field. And, and so we want to create a, a system and a process under which, you know, a, a multitude of voices are heard so that what we're creating is, is actually meeting the goal that we achieved. So we're, so we're not at that level of detail yet. Um, but we're really looking forward to some studies that are to come into to doing deep work with, you know, both the legislature, the administration, with programs, early educators, um, and, and a lot of other folks, because we know that the, all of those voices are really important. Great. So I while see another. Ali, did you want to jump in? I see you. Sure, yeah, while you're reading that, Drake, I'll just add, you know, the great questions, folks. And I see Heather um, Martin and others here. I mean, there are folks who are deeply involved in advancing the profession from leadership from within the field. And that's the work that Drake is alluding to, you know, really the the early the field of early childhood education is setting a lot of these um, standards in place. You know, what does it look like? What is the bridge? from today to the future as far as credentials, timeline. And so that's all happening, you know, continuing to happen, happening for years, answering a lot of those questions alongside the policy work. And, and again, as Drake said, we have the um, $2.5 million for loan forgiveness and scholarships. That's a, a building the pipeline, shoring up stabilization. But to fully give all early educators the compensation they deserve and need, you know, it's the big, that's the big money that this sets up in motion for 2023, you know, um, and so that's sort of, again, the big two chunks that really allow for affordability for families and for compensation for educators, that's what costs the most money in the system. And that's what we are now, we've put the stake in the ground as a state and said, we aren't going home without these things anymore by 2023. So we're on a pathway for that, that matches the policy, matches the time frame of what the field has been doing as well. Yeah, thanks, Sally. That's a great point. Yeah, I think we just wanna really bring to bear all the incredible work and knowledge and progress that's been made um, toward building the system that we all know Vermont needs and, and that we deserve, so. Wonderful. All right, we may have another minute or two, or we can just shift into into breakout groups. I think we're, as I mentioned, when I when I say we want to hear from you all and, and we want to continue the conversation, it's really um, true. We, it's so helpful to hear questions and to have these deep conversations about what this bill means um, and and how we can move forward in a really productive way. And so we're really excited to continue that conversation with you all. Um, and this this is you know year one of a three-year legislative campaign. So we're really excited about the success of H-171, but we also know there's there's more work to do. And now because of the success of the bill, we get to do that work together. Um, so we're really excited to, to continue that process with you all. Um, so yeah, so Ali, I think I'll, I'll hand it back to you at this point. Can I just jump in for a second? I'm sorry, I was a few minutes late. I have a one month old grandson, courtesy of my 45 year old son, his first child. Yay! <laughs> and um, people are visiting from all over the state and, and all over um, New England. So I've been ah, making dinner. At any rate, I want to say that I pay my staff very well. My pay scale goes from 1150 to 33. And I'm paying my, my teachers, my license, my teachers who've been working. I mean, these are people working 19, 22, 13, 18, 21 years. Um, I'm lucky to have kept them. I've kept them because I paid them well. But I can't find some. I mean, my after school kid from high from the academy gets 11.50 an hour. What I know is I can't find qualified staff anywhere, anywhere. And we're in this pickle. Part of it is health insurance. The first question a lot of people ask me is, do you offer health insurance? I offer everything else: two weeks paid vacation seven sick days, holidays, all of that, professional days, I pay them all, but I can't afford health insurance because I already lose a ton of money. So we need to go in that direction as well. I'd like to see Let's Go Kids jump on the next boat, which has got to be healthcare. Well, Judy, it's a great point. And, and beyond that, the, the goal of H-171, again, the twin goals, I'm biased, the twins, um, are, is 10% of affordability for families and mm -hmm. compensation for early educators. And that, that includes healthcare, Judy. And, and to your point, we need to build a pipeline 
um, you know, hundred percent. I mean, so, so right. Healthcare writ large, you know, might that be the next thing for a let's grow kids? Sure. Right. It's a, it's a universal, you know, right. As we are sort of saying child cares as well, but you know, we're really tackling on with, can we make sure early educators get, get the full compensation package that includes benefits to do this yeah. crucial work. And it helps pull that pipeline, you know, market forces are at play here. And if the world knew, Vermont was where you come to live out your dream and, you know, training as an early educator and you get, um, gr- you know, really commensurate uh, pay and fair pay and comp. I'm kissing all your feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. We were walking barefoot in the fields as soon as it wasn't cold anymore. But Judy, you are so wonderful. <laughs> You represent so much about what's amazing. I don't know if you all know Judy. She runs an amazing early education center in the Northeast Kingdom. And it's just- Used to run four. Amazing. (laughs) And you've been at it forever and you understand every detail and you've seen this evolution and it's just wonderful to hear. And, um, And thank you very much for your comments and for being here still and seeing this through to the end. We are so close. We are so close. So- Thank you so much, Drake. I, I'm going to move us in. So we have a chance to talk together and break out. So that's, I'm just going to move us into that so we don't run out of time. Um, and, and by the way, as I, as I pivot to that, you know, I see some great um, more questions in chat. As Rex said in the chat, we will get back to you with your questions individually. Um, but I just have to say to Judith, yes, we are talking about universal, you know, accessible, equitable, affordable childcare for all who need it. So it's not just affordable and those that do it make this, this, you know, fair compensation, but it's also that there is enough of it. There's enough of it for everyone. So you're not telling your early educator before your parents and your spouse that you're expecting, you know, so that's, that is a big piece of the puzzle here. Um, So thank you for the great chat and the great um, conversation and Drake for leading us through that. Um, now let's pivot to what's next <laughs> because it's not in our nature to pat ourselves on the back here. This is a huge victory. And like you all are saying, you know, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's next? How do we make sure we aren't going to go back? You know, we cannot go back. We've set ourselves on a path here. We've got to get that funding in the system. We got to complete this goal. Um, and so we need to make a plan best way to do, to take action. So you'll recall, this is your one of the three year plan, as we've said, we're right on track. We, we did not lose any ground as the legislature moved H-171 through. Um, it absolutely has our goals. It has the funding that we called for and it has the studies. And so what we're gonna spend the, the final 20 minutes or so that we have together tonight, going into breakout groups and making our summer action plans. This is, gonna, is, this is how we're gonna get this done. This is how we're gonna continue to build the momentum that's gonna track with these legislative campaign goals that we're talking about. So what are you going to do in these breakouts? You're going to learn about training opportunities, everything from learning to text or phone bank, using social media to host a virtual or in-person event, other ways you can keep the momentum going and make this movement that much more powerful. And, and if anything showed how important your voices are, it should be this session. None of these legislative successes would have happened um, without every single one of you doing all that you did. So thank you so much for building a brighter future for Vermont, for us all. And let's pivot into these breakout groups and make our plans to keep it going. Have fun. Thank you all so much for being here. Can't wait to hear how the conversations go.